I still can't wrap my mind around as to why he is even leaving Oklahoma in the first place. I think it's a terrible decision. Oklahoma has everything you need. You got weapons. You got a, what I think right now is a good head coach. I can't call him really good or great because he's still got to get there, but he's a good head coach. You got a good defense. Why would you leave? I did not expect him to consider this school. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we got some big time, and I mean big, 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 big time stuff to talk about in tonight's video. I hope each and every single one of you had a great Tuesday. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. As we all know, the past couple of days, it's been pretty hectic in the college football world. You got the whole dilemma with Florida State, Alabama. Not going to talk about that whatsoever. It's over with. And then most recently, arguably, the thing that's got everybody talking because it affects everybody. The transfer portal, it opened up on Monday and over 1,000, yes, that's right, you heard me correctly, in just 24 hours, over 1,000 players entered it. But I think it's more than safe to say two of the biggest names that entered the portal and two of the most shocking names that entered the portal was no other than Kyle McCord, Ohio State's quarterback, and Dylan Gabriel, Oklahoma's quarterback. Quarterback. It caught everybody off guard because these are two starting quarterbacks. Even though we see a lot of transfers, it's still extraordinarily rare to see starters entering the portal. It does happen occasionally, but not every day. Well, guess what? We got an update on where Kyle McCord may potentially go, and according to some reports, he's very interested in another Big Ten school. And we also got an update on where Dylan Gabriel is leaning towards right now, and I'll just put it out there right now. I did not expect him to consider this school. And that's on me because I probably should have considered him going here, but I don't know. I just didn't think about it. We got a couple other minor topics to speak on, including the number one cornerback, not quarterback, but cornerback in the portal. Buckle up, strap in, get your popcorn, get your snack, get your favorite meal you like to eat when you watch a video, because trust me, I do the same thing. It's going to be a jam-packed video. And also, got to throw this in there. We're trying to hit 310,000 subscribers before January 1st. Relatively simple. I'm not going to pitch you too hard. If you like the content, consider joining. It really helps on the channel, and we'd love for you to be here if you don't want to subscribe that's cool too but all right man blah 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 blah. shut the crap up now that for the dope let's get into it all right first things first so check this out this is something you don't see every day clemson's cornerback pride jr he's officially announced he's entering the transfer portal but here's the kicker to it he's entering it with a quote unquote here no contact tag on his entry a lot of people were confused by this and i don't blame you because we don't see this a lot everybody in the comment section was asking stuff like this what does no contact tag mean does it mean that he's gonna reach out to a school if he's interested essentially meaning that he's not allowing schools to hit him up but he's gonna hit up other schools and somebody replied to it it means he already knows where he's going because he was tampered with to be honest i don't know if this person is trying to crack a joke or if he's being serious because either way i could believe him because we know there's tampering in college football check on this analogy though i thought it was pretty funny yes it's like the girl who deletes all the pics with her man but puts her dms on private that's the best analogy you can use for this you can't hit him up if you're an opposing team but he's gonna hit you up in other terms he knows a lot of teams are gonna try to hit him up and he's really good and he doesn't want all the ugly you know females hitting him up at least if we're using that analogy he is a 10 out of 10 in his eyes so he wants to go after the top ones the top one percenters you can just automatically assume all the big time schools they're going to be in the race for him but i did think it was pretty interesting he entered with a no contact tag don't say that every day continuing along here i guess we'll talk about this while not we got an update on old dj oogabadoogie man oh man it just continues to get worse and worse and worse for the salmon rolls first off you don't make the playoff that's devastating news and then you get hit with the even worse news a couple hours later oh yeah by the way you're not going to make the playoff, but you got to play Georgia. That was terrible news. And then today, the news came out that Florida State has emerged as one of the top suitors for DJ Oogabadoogie. What an atrocious past 48 hours for the Florida State fan base. No playoff. You got to play Georgia. And your next quarterback might be DJ Ooga freaking Badoogie. And somebody in the comment section said Florida State would be an interesting landing spot. What? What's interesting about this? He's not. Okay, okay. I'll put it to you like this. He's mediocre at best. He can play good every now and then, but he's not great. He's not elite. We saw it at Clemson. We saw it at Oregon State. I don't know how much more film you need to see to call an ace a ace and a spade a spade. And the funny thing about all this is Florida State fans have made it evidently clear they don't want this guy. I don't know. I just think it'd be terrible for Florida State to go after him. Look, I know the quarterback situation isn't looking good with Tate Rodemaker and Brock Glenn, but I would not go after DJ Ugabadoogie. I think you can do better. There are plenty of other quarterbacks in the portal I'd rather have than Ugabadoogie. I'd probably say there's at least 10 or 11. Heck, I'd rather have Coastal Carolina's quarterback who entered the portal, Grayson McCall, than this guy. And I'm not disrespecting DJ Ugabadoogie. I just don't think he's going to live up to the Florida State standard, at least their standard now. He would disappoint a lot of fans, but let me know in the comment section. I'm curious. Am I the only one who's not high on him? 
we didn't even talk about the other team that's in the race form, and that's Louisville. I think that'd be a perfect and ideal fit. Louisville's like Oregon State. As long as you win nine, ten games a year, they'll be happy. There would also be less pressure there. That's a way better fit than Florida State. I don't even think he'll go to Florida State, but everyone's been talking about, yeah, they're interested in him, so who knows? Moving on to our next topic, I got to throw this in there because I've been following this very closely. We all know how Texas A&M, they already lost the former number one overall recruit. They're losing all these players left and right to make a long story short. Well, they just lost another defense alignment. That's a detrimental loss. And this isn't just any defense alignment. This was yet again another five-star recruit, a part of that legendary class. What a shame, man. What a shame. But am I going to sit up here and act like I'm shocked? No. They're dropping like flies at A&M. Nothing new there. Moving on to this topic, and we'll talk about this more tomorrow, but check this out. Kyle McCord, he is having a meeting with Nebraska's offensive coordinator, Marcus Satterfield, tomorrow. Oh, wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. My apologies. It's actually today. So by the time you're seeing this video, yeah, he already had the meeting. And somebody in the comments said, could be a good fit for both sides. And no, I disagree. That's a great fit for Nebraska, but not for McCord. You don't want to go to Nebraska. I know what all these Nebraska fans are going to say. Oh, we're a quarterback away. And yes, you do need a quarterback, but you also need a lot of other guys. <laughs> Somebody said Satterfield and McCord after going 5-7 and seven in 2024. We did all right for a couple of goofballs referring to the legendary SpongeBob movie. Well, I got to clap it up. I ain't never seen that meme before. That's a good tweet. I don't know. Maybe it would be a match made in heaven, but it's just hard for me to wrap my brain around Kyle McCord leaving a prestigious program like Ohio State and going to washed up and sorry and sucky Nebraska. Just doesn't make too much sense to me whatsoever, but let me know your thoughts down below. And I guess I'm the oddball out. Well, not really. There's some people that don't agree with it, but a lot of people in the comments, they like it. Me personally, not too big of a fan of it. And I could sit up here all day and talk about Comic Core, but we got to move on to the main topic of the main encore, the main reason you could touch this video. What's going on with Dylan Gabriel? I will continue to say this. I have no idea how Dylan Gabriel still has eligibility left, but somehow, some way, he does. I'm sick and tired. If you want to play five years of college football, I'm okay with it. But when you start playing six and seven years, no, I hate it. Get out of here. Go get a job. Go to the NFL. Do something. But it looks like Dylan Gabriel doesn't care. He's going to try to make as much money as he can. And let me make this evidently clear. I'm not hating the player. I'm hating the game. I do the same thing as Dylan Gabriel. Because guess what? No matter where he goes, at bare minimum, he's going to get $1 million plus. Secure the bag. That's awesome. Hate the player. not the. I mean, hate the game, not the player. My apologies. But anyways, getting a move along here. It is being reported that Oregon, yes, Oregon is the favorite to land Oklahoma transfer quarterback Dylan Gabriel. Maybe some of y'all think that's a good fit, but I just didn't even consider it for some reason because I thought Oregon would go after Cameron Ward. And to me, it just doesn't feel right. Dylan Gabriel in Oregon, I don't know. There's something about it that's off-putting to me. Not to say that I don't think it'd work out because I think Dylan Gabriel's a heck of a quarterback. He can go anywhere and he's going to benefit most teams. But what I'm more so of saying is, I don't know, when I think of an Oregon quarterback, I think more of a Cameron Ward type of player, that dual threat guy. Dylan Gabriel, he's an underrated runner, but he's not a dual threat if you get what I'm trying to say. I'll get back to that in just a second, continuing along here, but USC is expected to make a push for the veteran signal caller. To me, right now USC is the one that makes the most sense and that would also be crazy for Lincoln Riley yet again to steal Oklahoma's star quarterback because make no mistakes about it Dylan Gabriel he's a star in my eyes at least at the collegiate level the only reason he didn't get more Heisman love than he probably should have is because Oklahoma lost those two games to two teams they shouldn't have lost to but if Oklahoma wound up finishing the year 11 and 1 or went undefeated he probably would have got an invite to the Heisman ceremony he put up great numbers. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he wound up finishing six in passing yards. That was unreal. I'm looking at the comment section here, this is interesting. SC is not going after this dude. This is coming from a USC fan. Huh. What do y'all think about that? Well, here's my question in that comment. Why wouldn't they? Do people not like Dylan Gabriel? He's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. And I will say this, if Lincoln Riley gets another Oklahoma quarterback, that's going to be crazy, man, because at this point in time, what's going on? It seems like Oklahoma is the feeding factory for Lincoln Riley. They develop a quarterback, get him ready to play, and then Lincoln Riley's like, oh, yeah, thanks, I'll take that now. I mean, seriously, what are we doing? Is this what we want college football to be? You have a guy that is starting in a Power 5 conference next year is going to be in the SEC, he is a starter, I can't even say that enough, and he's going to transfer to start somewhere else. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is the dark side to the portal. And let's just say for the sake of this video, Dylan Gabriel winds up going to USC. From a winning standpoint, I'm not talking about his own numbers on offense, but from a winning standpoint, it doesn't make any sense. USC went, what was it, 7-5 and five this year? They were mediocre at best. Oklahoma had a great year this year. I know they didn't 
finish the way they wanted to, but they still went 10-2. and two. Oklahoma has a solid defense where USC has arguably one of the worst five defenses in the nation. It's just going to be really interesting to keep up with Dylan Gabriel's recruitment process and all this and to see what he winds up doing. Because we don't know what's going through his mind. If he's thinking, hey, man, I want to have a record-setting year. I want to pass for 5,000 yards, throw for 50 touchdowns, pass the ball 60, 70 times a game, then yeah, he should go to USC. That'd be the best fit. But however, if he wants to compete for a, let's just say, national championship, then no, you shouldn't even be considering USC. You should either A, stay at Oklahoma, or B, go to Oregon. And I know what some people are going to say, well, Matt, Oklahoma's going to the SEC next year. You probably saw that brutal schedule. Let me throw this in there. If you ain't seen Oklahoma's schedule for next year, whew, just say a quick prayer for them. It is brutal. But still at that, Oklahoma has a better chance of winning a championship than USC because USC will not win a championship next year. They have 0% chance. They don't play defense. And if you can't play a look at defense, you can't even compete for a championship. Let me know in the comment section, where do you think Dylan Gabriel is going to go? It looks like at this point in time, it's a two-horse race. It's coming down to Oregon and USC. And me personally, if I was making this decision, it's not even a decision. I'm going to Oregon. I want to win games. And also got to throw this in there. I still can't wrap my mind around as to why he is even leaving Oklahoma in the first place. I think it's a terrible decision. Oklahoma has everything you need. You got weapons. You got a, what I think right now is a good head coach. I can't call him really good or great because he's still got to get there. But he's a good head coach. You got a good defense. Why would you leave? I hope it works out for him. I really do. I want to see every man succeed in this life. But he might find out the hard way that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. There's many more things I could say. I'll leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts down below. But to Robert!